Hi guys, so here's a short video on one of my pieces I did last year for my daily sculpt challenge. Now, I didn't actually get very far on that, I only did about 20 odd sculpts. Now, when I originally recorded this one, I wanted to do a full breakdown and a longer video, but unfortunately, I've lost all my original files for that. So I'm gonna do my best to describe the process of making this. So the day I made this, I watched the video of Benedict Cumberbatch mispronouncing the word penguin, and he would say penguin or pengling. And if you haven't seen that, here it is. I find it so funny. This is odd. Of all the questions we had, yeah. the one that came up most often was <laughs> Benedict to say the word penguin. Got <laughs> <laughs> it wrong repeatedly in a documentary, and now I'm completely terrified of the words. Penguins, crested penguins, parent penguin heading home from woodlands so attractive to penguins. With all these daily sculpts, I would start with a sphere in ZBrush, and I would try to add to that all the extra little bits of the character that can be kept as separate pieces for as long as possible. So in this case, it would be the eyeballs and the eyelids and the nose, any kind of little bits like the feet and the wings and any feathers. So with the eyelids, I would try to keep them separate from the rest of the mesh as long as possible. That's because I want to try and retain that nice sharp edge. And when you're working with Dynamesh and a model that you're going to be sculpting on, moving around a lot, the sharp edges like that will tend to start getting muddy and messy and it's very hard to try and get that nice sharp edge back again. So I try to make sure that the rest of the model is completely done before combining it all together and softening out some of them sharper edges. Now as this is a baby cute animal we need to make sure that there's no hard edges to the overall form of the character and the expression on the face takes a lot of back and forth to get that kind of feeling of lost or scared or alone on that character. Now the tears are separate meshes that way they can be shaded differently have some transparency and catch the light a little bit better than the rest of the material. Now as this is an art piece it's not for game or anything like that I didn't have to worry about topology or anything um, but I did want to add some more background elements to evoke the situation that this character is in. It's lost and alone in maybe an unpleasant place. So to do that, I thought I'd add a fish and make it very large to give a sense of scale. This is only a tiny little penguin. And the fish is going to be a dead fish in the background. And I didn't want to spend too long on this. So I've just dragged out some spheres, one for the head, the body and the fins and very quickly roughed in the overall shape I want from this. And once I'm happy with that roughing, I can use clay polish to sharpen up some of them details. And to quickly get the scales, I've created a plane sculpted in the scales that I wanted on them plane, just really rough because it's going to be blurred in the background. Then I've created an alpha from that plane, so you can do a grab dock on your alphas to grab something like that. And that way I can then just drag those scales out on the model to quickly get some texture onto this. I've cut a hole in the middle of the fish and again I've just dragged in some more spheres with a curve to add the ribs and then I've used the new transpose tools to just position this fish like it's lying on the floor in a more natural position. When doing any kind of sculpts that are these really soft cartoony type characters it's really important to use the smooth brush really heavily. You don't want any indentations or any kind of warp into the soft curves of your character. You want them each curve to flow neatly into the rest. The wobblier or unneat the transitions of curves are on your character the worse it'll look because you want that really nice soft lighting and soft shading across the entire character. So in ZBrush I use Zero Mesher to create a semi-dense mesh and this gives me a nice smooth topology across the character. That allows me to use ZBrush inbuilt UV unwrapper and that just takes every shell that I've created with Zero Mesh and does a simple unwrap and it's quite a lot of stretching and warping when you do this but as this is just for a single locked off camera view and I'm not bothered about having a low poly texture map or anything like that this will do for for what I need and then I've done the same with the fish as well Then I can bring this into substance painter and I create a simple bake for all my layers to get some ambient occlusion in there and then I've just added a few simple colors on this now this is a very stylized character so it really doesn't need much painting so all I've done is a nice brushed in transition between the white and the dark to give kind of an illusion of feathers and I've added some simple gradients like to the wingtips a subtle gradient to the bottom upwards as well as well as some slightly lighter patches around the tops of the eyes and stuff like that in grey just to make those areas stand out a little bit more. So very simple, just 15 minutes and we've got some nice colours to work with in Marmoset. So in Marmoset Toolbag, if we go here and have a look at the second camera, 
we can see I've duplicated that fish around the place and I've actually duplicated it and moved it while looking through the main camera in order to frame the subject as nice as possible. Now this could have probably done with maybe a second variation of fish, but I think I've got quite a lot out of this for what it is. And the materials from Substance Painter are set up very simply here with no special extra effects. The only thing I've done is created a transparent material and added that to the tiers separately. And also I've created a secondary layer around the eyes uh, with the transparency material on there just to create some nice reflections on them eyes as well. And the lighting in this is very simple. I've not added any extra lights. I've just got a skylight with this nice snowy HDRI map on there to add a cool overall feel to this scene. And on the main camera, I've added quite a lot of depth of field to close in on this character. So to learn a little bit more about lighting and setting up images in Marmoset, you can find my other tutorial on portfolio rendering within Marmoset for a more detailed look at how to do that. So I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial and if you found it useful, please like and subscribe as it really does help make these videos worthwhile. So I'll see you in the next video.